When I came to turn the engine off the other day, this is what happened. I thought the key had snapped in the lock, but it hadn't. It was complete. But what had actually happened was the metal had snapped there that retains the key in the fob. So what I'm going to show you now is rather than spending over 200 pound on a new key from Ford, we're going to repair this one by spending just under nine pounds. Right, so to facilitate the repair, what I've had to do is go onto Amazon and buy this. Now this is a two button key fob. However, you can also get three button key fobs as well for roughly the same price. So let's move that, that, and we've got a screw there for some reason. We'll just pop that to one side. So the first thing that we've got to do is get inside the damaged key fob. And if you can see, so there, this key just fitted into it like that and the metal's fatigued and damaged. So what we're going to do is, as I said, just replace this key fob in its entirety, but by using the old key. So the first thing we need to do is take off this back cover. Now it's the same process that you use for when you're changing the battery in it. Uh, and I'll put a link into a video that I did for that. But basically just get a small screwdriver, pop it into, there's a, a little hole here, pop it in, lift it up, and that cover comes off. Now what we need to do is remove this screw so that we can access the electronics inside. And to remove the screw, we need a T6 torque bit. So we're gonna pop that in there and then just unscrew that. Once that's out, we'll just remove the battery and then you just prise it apart like that. So that pops off. Those are your electrics what, and we're going to transfer those into the new fob. And if we just come up and have a look at it, you'll see that that fitted into the... Anyway, you'll see it in, uh, in more depth now. And to do that, I'm just going to press onto the back here and it should just pop out. And that's removed that. So we're going to put the old key fob to one side now. All right, now we get the new key fob and we do exactly the same to open it. So key out, find the hole in the back, which is somewhere around here. There we go. Prise the cover off. Now there's no screw in it because that's the screw that was provided. So that's the one we're going to be using. And this bit is, um, the, the, this bit inside is different. There's a, a spring that you've really got to watch here. So get your screwdriver, prise that open like that. And there is the button and there is the spring. And it's a little bit complicated putting it back together. But the first thing that we've got to do, move those to one side, move that to one side, is you will see that there's a bar there and we need to remove this from this. And to do that, we push out this spring bar inside. And it should just push out. So if I get the right tool, right, so as you can see, that's what we've got to push out. Now I can't do it here, so I'm just going to go down to the garage where I've got a clamp and I'm going to do it down there. And it's just a case of, as I say, pushing it out. All right, so it's all clamped in. This is the bar going through there that we've got to knock out. I've got a, a hole punch. And it's just a case of making sure it doesn't go through the middle of that bar and then I can knock it out. And also making sure that it doesn't then go onto the floor. Okay, it's nearly out. Don't know whether to take the rest out with the pliers. Just now. I want to drop it on the garage floor. Nearly there. Right. 
Right, that's it now. As you can see, the bar's still in. I'm going to leave it in. It's there. But the key is now free, or the key blank is free, I should say. And as you can see on here, it's got an indentation in it just there. And that, when it's put in there, we can see. Yeah. Now that, when it's put in there, when the bar's pushed in, it holds it in place so that this doesn't come out of there. So what we need to do now is get the original key, pop it in, push the bar back in, and that's it. Okay, so we're back. That's the blank that we've taken out, and as you can see, just fits into there like so. So what we need to do is get rid of that and get this. Now it can only go in one way, and it's with that notch on that side where my nail is because this is going to push in and hold it in place. Pop it in, hold it in place like so. And then with a pair of pliers, hopefully I should just be able to pinch that bar back in. I don't want to be knocking it. Also I don't want to be trapping my fingers. All right, there we go. So we've squeezed that in. All right, that's perfect. And now we need to put this back into here. It's not quite as straightforward as you might think. Right, now we've done that, we need to get the electronics. Pop those back into the new fob, nice and straightforward. So that's in there. We can get rid of the old waterproofer because we've got the new one in there. So we've got the electrics in it. Now we just need to put the key blank in it, which is a little bit easier said than done. If we have a look at the spring, at one end, the bar is coming out and at the other end, the bar is going in. On this side of the key, get the bit with the bar coming out, pop it in and it goes into this cutout here. Then get the button, pop it over the top and it will actually lock onto that spring. Then you get the key, pop the key over. And what we need to do is we need to put it under tension now so that when the button's pressed, the spring wants to return to where it was so it springs out. And the way to do that is turn the spring the opposite way. So if we go one revolution and then two revolutions, like so, hold the key in place because it's just wanting to come out. So hold it in place like that. Get the key fob and pop it over the top and close it. And now it just opens nice and easy. Close, open, close, open. We're going to put the screw back in, put the battery back in, and then it should be absolutely perfect. I'll use the new screw because I may as well do. I've paid for it. It looks like the new screw is just a, a Phillips head. So I'll get that. That's nice and tight. Get the battery, pop the battery back in. Get the cover, pop that back on. And now we should have a key that works. So we'll go down and try it. Right, first thing, does it actually work? Right, unlocked, locked. So we know that the electrics are working fine in it. Now let's just see if the key works. And key in, turn it. Perfect. Now that has saved me around about £200. It wasn't exactly straightforward, you need a couple of tools, but well worth it to save you that sort of money. I hope this video helped you. If it did, subscribe, like, but yeah, excellent. That's it, all done. Um, as I've said, it saved me a fortune. It was a bit fiddly, but well worth it at the end of the day. If your key has broken and you can get this blank cut, then obviously, 
you can use everything that came with the other one and replace it with the cut key as well. Uh, I was fortunate my key hadn't broken, so it was just a case of dismantling the, the, um, the blank fob, transferring everything across, then closing it up. Little bit fiddly with the spring, but yeah, huge recommendation. Really, really easy to do, and now I can throw all this. And I'll put links below to both the two button fob and the three button fob, all on Amazon. Uh, like I say, around about nine pounds, you can't go wrong.